Okay guys, thank you for finding my channel. I'm gonna show you in 10 minute sections how to put this scene together. So let's get stuck in. Okay guys, welcome back. Dr. H here with another 10 minute Unity tutorial on behalf of Octobeard Media. So as you can see, my scene here is pretty much as we left it last time round. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna add a couple of other things in here. And we're gonna start by adding in some fire. So I'm going to find my trash can, the trash can that I put in the alleyway back here. I'm going to beam in on that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this trash can on fire. In order to do that, I'm just going to delete the lid, say that that lid's completely gone somewhere. This is where the fire is going to be. So this is a two-step process. First of all, in order to get the fire in there itself, I'm going to use one of the presets, which can be found in assets, import package, and particle systems. Now there's lots we can do with particle systems. I'm just going to go through the basics of the presets that are in here if I import it. I'm just going to go through the basics of the presets that come in the standard assets particle systems folder here. So you'll find what we're looking for in prefabs and there's a whole bunch of different stuff in here that you might want to work with. I'm just going to work today with fire mobile because it's nice and simple and short. If I drag the fire mobile into my scene here you can see that it starts to emit this lovely fire. Okay, I'm just gonna move it so it comes from the right place, like this, lift it up, and I'm gonna move it into my brazier. Now in a later tutorial, I'll show you how to create fire or any particle systems of your own. But for today, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna worry about a couple of the key settings when working with any kind of particles. You can see I'm struggling to get everything I want in shot at the same time, because I want this in shot, and this in shot, and this in shot. So you'll notice it's spitting out these cubed sort of square things here. Those are the particle textures that are going up to create this lovely fire effect. If I just pause it, you'll see they are there. And if I stop it altogether, then it stops like that. I can restart it. Now in order to get this to work, I'm gonna go over to here. I'm just gonna look at a few of the settings that are in the particle system here. There are a couple of things that I want to do. First of all, I wanna make sure that it's looping, definitely. Second thing I want to make sure is that it's pre-warmed. Let me show you what happens if it isn't pre-warmed. I'm going to move my character so that they start right next to where I've just put this fire and they're looking at it. At the moment, the fire is not pre-warmed. Let's watch what happens when we push play. The fire starts. What I want is I want the fire to be already started when the player gets over there. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is check this pre-warm box here, which means that it should be nice and running when I start. The second thing I need to do down here is just de-check Play on Awake, because Play on Awake tells it to start playing when the game wakes up, when the game starts. And I want to de-check that because I want it to be already playing. So if I do that, the game starts and the fire's already there. Okay, it, it, it kind of starts in a paused mode, but by the time the player gets to it, it's gonna be running along with everything else. So, th so that was step one. But you'll notice that the fire isn't actually emitting very much light. The local area around it doesn't seem to be orange with the glow of the flames in the way that I'd kind of like it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import another type of light. I'm gonna go game object, light, and this time I'm gonna use a point light. I'm gonna create the point light there, and you can see straight away that the point light, as its name suggests, is a point of light that radiates light all around it in all directions. Shoots it out to the side and below and above and everywhere else. And I'm just gonna put that point light slap bang in the middle of my fire like that. And then I'm gonna change my color and I still have the same preset as before. So I'm gonna paste that color in so it's that lovely kind of orangey sodium glow, it's the color of fire, it works just as well here. And I might decide to change the range of that, which of course changes the intensity. If I roll back on it, you can see the range is controlled by this here, controls the range, and I can change the intensity, so even if it's got a very short range, I can still make it very intense. Obviously that's way too intense. But if I take it up to something like maybe 1.5, like so, and start the player off, you can see that kind of orange glow that's coming from the fire. So if I move my player back to where they were at the start of the game, which is down here, and we start playing, I can see that thing's burning over there. That's grabbing my attention straight away. I can't see anything over here for this first poster that I wanted to draw their attention to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this light in like this, 
And because I'm creating basically a damaged, let's take this to a pivot point here, a damaged world, like so, I'm going to knock my street light over onto its side. Something, who knows what, has knocked this street light over. So it's not where it's supposed to be anymore. But it's a good thing they have because that is now illuminating the wall right here. So I'll line this up properly, like so. And I might cheat ever so slightly with the light and rotate that around and maybe boost the intensity of this one as well because I want to draw the player's attention to that first thing that's on the wall like so. Quick save my game. Start it off. You can see that my player starts there and that's the first thing that they see. They go over and they see the picture of the missing kitty. They look around. I can't see what's going on over here so maybe I'm going to need another fire burning brazier in order to do that. Where's my brazier with my fire? So that's my trash can. I'm going to make the fire the child of my trash can. I'm going to make the point light the child of my trash can as well. And then if I duplicate the trash can, I'm duplicating everything else with it. And I can bring that down here and all sorts of interesting things start to happen in my scene. Okay, so now we've got the starts of a very scary, spooky, eerie scene. So since we have a little time left over, I thought I'd show you a really cool effect that we can make with our light here. So if I just click play and come in, you can see my light is flickering slightly, creepily, eerily, which draws the player's attention to it. So I've achieved this by writing a script called Flickr. To be fair, I didn't write it. I got it from here. I got it from Sinbad here. This is a public domain Creative Commons script. So I will put the link in the comments section and you can all copy and paste the script in yourself. I'm going to show you now how to get a script working because there are thousands of scripts online that allow you to do all sorts of things. So first of all, I'm going to copy all of this and I'm going to go back into Unity. And I'm going to create, right click, I'm going to create a C Sharp script. Now I've called mine here Flickr, but he's called his Light Flickr Effect. So I'm going to rename this light flicker effect in here. This new behavior is going to be light flicker effect. Capitals do matter with scripting. Now this is not going to turn into a big scripting tutorial because the aim of these 10 minute tutorials is that you can get up and running with as little coding knowledge as possible. If I double click that and open it up, in my case it opens up in Dreamweaver, in your case it might open up in Mono Develop. either way it's the same thing. I'm just going to select over everything in here and I'm going to paste the new script over it. Now some of this isn't code, so let's just tidy this up a little bit. The code starts using Unity Engine here. So everything above there, I'm just going to delete that. All this stuff here that's greyed out, that's fine, we can leave that in. Let's go down to the bottom. The code ends with the last squiggly bracket. Everything below that, we're also going to delete. And then I'm going to save with Command S. What I should have now is I should have a working code saying light flicker effect. Just check I've got no errors by going into the console. Orange errors like this are fine. Red errors will stop you from playing. Just clear those two and we'll start up. So this one here, I've renamed it already Flickering Light. I'm just going to take my test script off so you can see what we do. All I do is I've got the script here, this fl light flickering effect, the one that I've just copied and pasted into Dreamweaver here. All I'm going to do on my, on my light itself is I'm going to drag this script onto the light. You can see I've got a few options. The first thing I need to do is I need to tell it which light is going to flicker. Well, that's simple. The one here, I've renamed it Flickering Light. It's just a basic spotlight. Drag that in there. That's the one that's going to flicker. Minimum intensity and maximum intensity. Well, it can't go any darker than off. Let's put the maximum intensity up to three, maybe. And then save the game, push play, and see what happens. Oh, that's a lovely kind of flickering effect right there. I like that a lot. That's going to really bring some ambience to my game when I stick a skybox in, which is what we're going to be doing in the very next tutorial. Thank you for watching this 10 minute Unity tutorial. I've been Dr. H. In the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at skyboxes and adding on some ambient music. Hope to see you there.